With COVID flying around the triad and cases surging, Guilford County health experts and school leaders came together today to say the safest place for kids right now is actually right here inside the school building. Although outbreaks in schools can occur, multiple studies have shown that transmission within the school setting is typically lower than levels of community transmission when prevention strategies are in place in these schools. I would just like to conclude by emphasizing that schools are the safest place for students to be because of the public health protocols that are in place and all of the work that all of our staff and teachers are doing at this time to make sure that our students are following these protocols. I wanted to be very clear that that I cannot think of um, a situation where I would recommend that we close schools, the district, unless Dr. Van said to me as the public health official that uh, the situation is so dire that you must close schools. That was a really big claim. I'm Ben Briscoe. From now until six, we're going to dig into what actually makes schools safer for your child and the one thing that could shut down the whole system and send kids back to remote learning. Let's start with the layers of protection kids have in schools. None of this is new to us. You know, the big thing the district continue to push is all eligible students should get vaccinated. Peeling back that layer of protection, next, Guilford County Schools requires masks. Dr. Vaughn says that requiring masks will see much lower levels of transmission than schools that don't require them. And the third layer, social distancing. Experts have told us for months that watching your distance can help prevent the spread. In fact, a Duke University study from October supports that school districts are telling you the truth. That study found districts with universal masking saw lower levels of transmission than the surrounding community. For every 13 people that got infected outside of school, only one person got COVID at the school where people were wearing masks. Today, the state health department said schools have all the tools they need to keep kids safe and remain open for in-person learning. He says districts just need to use the plan recommended by the state that the Strong Schools Toolkit is incredibly effective when schools follow those guidelines, including having mask requirements at reducing infection and spread and keeping kids in the classroom. Uh, we will be continuing to review that information, meeting with the school board later this week uh, to potentially implement some of that into our policy. Some doctors around the country do worry that sending kids back to school could make the pandemic worse. The United States recently recorded a record for children admitted to the hospital with the virus. Between December 22nd and 28th, the country averaged 378 children entering the hospital each day. That number jumped 66% from the week before. It's the highest numbers we've seen since early September. One mother says her four-month-old, Olivia, got coronavirus and had to be hospitalized. She was hospitalized a month ago with a different type of virus, and then she recovered from that just fine. And then we were doing great, and then she caught COVID, and here we are. I was devastated. I, I just sat there and I cried because I didn't know, like, what her fate would be like. Conehell says they don't have any children in the hospital as of last night, but their data analyst says he's following two trends over the past couple of months. First, the number of kids going to the hospital with COVID-like illnesses increased by about 50%, and the number of children testing positive at the hospital has tripled since mid-December. The good news is that kids going to the hospital with COVID remains very rare. Children make up about 3% of all COVID hospitalizations last week. That doesn't mean, though, that it can't happen. A Cone Health doctor explains there's one big warning sign to look for if your child gets sick. The biggest things I want you to watch out for are, you know, breathing hard. So if your child's breathing hard, meaning that they're sucking in, their chest is sucking in, they're really short of breath, can't finish the sentence, that's a sign that they're um, in trouble and you need to come in right away. Overall, doctors say most child COVID cases can be treated as you would a cold with lots of rest, fluid, and that sort. They also encourage any child eligible for Pfizer's COVID vaccine to go out and get it. 
Guilford County's health director says schools could get some help in their fight against the pandemic soon. The CDC is expected to authorize booster shots for 12 to 15 year olds who got the Pfizer shots. The FDA signed off on the move yesterday. Doctors say boosters are the best way to protect people from the highly contagious Omicron. Pfizer says their booster increases someone's immunity 25 fold. We're most interested in making sure that uh, we prevent uh, serious outcomes such as hospitalization and death, which granted, though uncommon uh, in 12 to 15 year olds, can occur. The FDA also approved a third shot for kids as young as five with compromised immune systems. The CDC could give the final approval later this week. Kids younger than five, well, they still can't get the vaccine. So how do you help protect those children not eligible yet? The medical director for the children's unit at Moses Cones Hospital says you need to make a bubble around those people, those unvaccinated children. He says everyone, parents, cousins, babysitters, they should get vaccinated. You know, for those young kids who can't get the vaccine yet, um, there's something we call cocooning, which is making sure everyone around them is protected, right? So if everyone around that, you know, young baby or the young child is vaccinated, everyone around them is wearing a mask, that's going to go a long way in protecting them. Now, staffing shortages could make it hard to keep schools open. Teachers all over the country say the pandemic has made their jobs harder than ever. In fact, a former teacher says it might be best for some of her colleagues to find other jobs. It's just not healthy mentally for a teacher to stay in the field. So they've got to take the pressure off and you've got to treat teachers as professionals. They have been to school, they have been trained. Guilford County Schools with me today. GCS says they're seeing a shortage of both bus drivers and substitute impact. teachers. If they run into a teacher shortage, that could cause problems keeping schools open. Strong schools uh, but we are struggling to find substitute teachers, as is uh, true for districts all over the state and all over the country. It's just very difficult to find employees in all fields, uh, all industries uh, in this country right now. Isn't that the truth? A bill introduced in the U.S. Education Committee could help solve the problem, though. The Senate bill calls for more mental health resources in schools. The CDC recently declared a mental health emergency among teenagers. During the pandemic, pediatric mental health emergencies have increased 30%. Greensboro sitting Congresswoman is on the Education Committee. She talked with us before about the mental health problems in school, and now Kathy Manning has introduced the bill in the House to help. She thinks it could really make a difference. And there are kids who've experienced enormous um, mental health stress during the past uh, year and a half. And we wanna make sure that this bill was introduced to make sure that when the schools talk about physical health and nutrition, they also, also talk about mental health. It is clear leaders wanna keep your kids in school. They say they need your help to do it though. It is the best way they can keep them safe. The message is not changed. They say everyone eligible should get vaccinated that way we can keep our kids in school and our community safe.